the peopling of the Americas has long been one of the most debated topics in archaeology and genetics. For decades, the standard narrative revolved around a single founding population crossing the Bering Land Bridge during the last glacial maximum, moving southward through an ice-free corridor or along the Pacific coast. But in recent years, with the rise of ancient DNA research, that picture has fractured into something more complex. Multiple ancient lineages have been identified, including ancient Beringians in Alaska, the Northern Native American lineage, the Southern Native American lineage, and now a newly recognized group tied directly to the Blackfoot Confederacy of the Northwestern Plains. A groundbreaking new study provided genomic data from historic Blackfoot individuals as well as living members of the Confederacy, revealing a distinct lineage that split from the ancestors of Northern and Southern Native Americans roughly 18,000 years ago. This places the Blackfoot divergence just after the Beringian standstill, and before the separation of the southern and northern lineage around 15,700 years ago. Such a result suggests not only deep antiquity for the Blackfoot within North America, but also the possibility that they may represent the last surviving branch of a once broader, ancient, Beringian-derived population that otherwise went extinct. This narrative offers a powerful counterpoint to older anthropological models that placed Blackfoot origins in the Great Lakes region, linking them more recently to Algonquian migrations. Instead, the genetic evidence points to extraordinary continuity in the northwestern plains, stretching back to the late Pleistocene. To understand the implications of this, it is worth exploring what the DNA tells us how it connects to archaeological evidence and oral traditions, and how the Blackfoot lineage may have survived environmental crises. The first major clue comes from Alaska. Ancient genomes from Upward Sun River, about 11,500 years old, and Trail Creek Caves, 9,500 years old, revealed an unexpected lineage, now known as Ancient Beringian. These individuals were not directly ancestral to modern Native Americans, but represented a population that split from the main founding group shortly after the Beringian standstill. Genetic modelling showed that ancient Beringians diverged about 21,000 years ago, long before the split of the northern and southern Native American branches. Until recently, these lineages were thought to have vanished. Yet the Blackfoot study has shown otherwise. Their ancestors appear to have diverged from the common ancestor after the ancient Beringian split, but before North and South America separated genetically. In effect, the Blackfoot lineage occupies an intermediate position, not purely ancient Beringian, not purely Northern or Southern, but a distinct branch that survived while others disappeared. This survival is crucial. It implies that ancient Beringians were not confined to Alaska and did not entirely vanish. Instead, one group moved southward, perhaps along the Rocky Mountain Front or interior corridors, which may have opened as early as 15,500 years ago, where they became the ancestors of the Blackfoot. All other ancient Beringian branches seem to have been absorbed or replaced by later expansions, leaving the Blackfoot as the sole carriers of this ancient signal. The study's demographic modelling estimates the split of the Blackfoot lineage at 18,104 years ago. This places their divergence right as the late Pleistocene ice sheets were beginning to retreat, but before the continent had fully opened. At that time, Beringia was still a broad landmass connecting Asia and North America. Populations were likely fragmented, with some remaining in Northeast Asia, others in Alaska and Yukon, and still others pressing southward along possible refuges. What makes this date remarkable is its independence. The northern and southern Native American branches, which gave rise to most present-day indigenous populations, do not separate until 15,000 years ago. Thus, the Blackfoot lineage represents an earlier departure, a founding branch that survived separately while other groups were still interconnected. This divergence corresponds well with archaeological hints of early occupation in the northwestern plains, Horse and camel hunting sites at Wally's Beach in Alberta have been dated to just after the last glacial maximum, around 13,000 to 14,000 years ago. Oral traditions of the Blackfoot, which speak of their ancestors' deep presence along the Rocky Mountain front, also align with this timing. 
When taken together with the genomic evidence, the picture emerges of a people whose ancestors entered the plains early and remained there continuously. The extinction of the broader ancient Beringian populations remains a puzzle. In Alaska, their last known representatives lived only 9,500 years ago. After that, they vanished from the genetic record replaced by later northern populations. Why then did the Blackfoot survive when other ancient Beringians did not? One possibility is geography. Populations that remained in Alaska were exposed to continual waves of migration from both north and south. They may have been overwhelmed or absorbed by later groups. By contrast, those who moved into the northwestern plains found themselves in a vast ecological zone where they could establish deep roots. Another factor may have been cultural specialization. Blackfoot ancestors were bison hunters par excellence, a way of life that may have given them stability during periods when other populations struggled. Archaeological evidence from the plains shows that bison hunting strategies have extraordinary depth, stretching back to the earliest Holocene. This continuity mirrors the genetic persistence identified in the study. If so, the Blackfoot can be seen as the last surviving ancient Beringians, a living remnant of a population that once spread more widely across North America but was extinguished everywhere else. The study also found that Native Americans and East Asians split 39,000 years ago. The Blackfoot genetic signature also raises questions about connections to other Western populations, particularly in the Pacific Northwest. The study shows that ancient and present-day Blackfoot individuals cluster closely together, forming a lineage distinct from both northern Athabascans and southern groups, like the Caritiana of South America. Yet in some analyses, they also show partial affinities with tribes further west. Archaeologically, the Rocky Mountain Front and the Columbia Plateau were closely connected. Trade networks in obsidian, shells and copper linked the plains to the coast, and oral traditions recount long-distance journeys. Some researchers have suggested that early refugees along the Pacific Northwest coast during the late Pleistocene may have sheltered populations related to the Blackfoot. If so, the Blackfoot lineage could represent the inland branch of a once broader Pacific Northwest Plains population that diverged from other Native American groups during the 18,000-year split. This raises an intriguing hypothesis. The Blackfoot and certain Pacific Northwest tribes may share deeper ancestry in a common late Pleistocene refuge, one that survived independently of the southern and northern expansions. Another layer of complexity comes from linguistics. The Blackfoot language belongs to the Algic family, alongside Algonquian languages of the Great Lakes and northeastern woodlands. For decades, anthropologists assumed that the Blackfoot must have migrated westward from that region in relatively recent times. The DNA tells a different story. Blackfoot genetics do not cluster with central Algonquian speakers. Instead, they form their own lineage, much older than the linguistic connections suggest. This means that the Blackfoot language is not evidence of recent migration, but of ancient divergence within the Algic family itself. In fact, linguistic reconstructions show that certain features of Blackfoot are more archaic than Proto-Algonquian, meaning that Blackfoot speech may preserve elements from the earliest branching of the family. The likely explanation is that Blackfoot ancestors have always lived in the West, but over thousands of years, their language maintained distant ties to other Algonquian tongues through contact and shared heritage. In this sense, the Algonquian puzzle mirrors the genetic evidence. The Blackfoot are both connected to and distinct from neighboring groups, maintaining an independent lineage that stretches back to the late Pleistocene. The younger Dryas, 12,900 to 11,700 years ago, was one of the most challenging climatic episodes in North America's human history. As the climate abruptly returned to glacial conditions, many habitats contracted, game populations declined, and human communities were stressed. It is plausible that many of the early ancient Beringian-derived populations went extinct during this bottleneck. Yet the Blackfoot lineage survived. How? One explanation is that their ancestors found refuge in a specific ecological zone that provided stability despite broader upheaval. The northwestern plains and the Rocky Mountain Front are strong candidates. 
glacial kettles, river valleys and bison herds may have offered the resources necessary for survival when other regions became uninhabitable. Archaeological research in Montana and Alberta suggests continuous occupation across this period, lending weight to the idea of a younger Dryas refuge. If so, the Blackfoot lineage's survival was not accidental. It was rooted in both geography and lifeway. By occupying a region that remained viable during climatic stress and by relying on a subsistence strategy that emphasized mobility and large game, the ancestors of the Blackfoot were able to endure while related groups perished. Their DNA today bears witness to this resilience. It is striking how well these genetic findings align with Blackfoot oral traditions. Elders have long emphasized that the Blackfoot have always lived along the Rocky Mountain Front and Northwestern Plains, hunting bison and maintaining their sacred relationships with the land. Anthropologists often dismiss these traditions, preferring models of recent migration from the East. But the genomic evidence now confirms what oral history has preserved that the Blackfoot have been in their homeland since the end of the Ice Age. The continuity is extraordinary. Historic individuals from the 18th and 19th centuries analysed in the study show close affinity with modern Blackfoot, proving that despite the upheavals of colonialism, epidemics and warfare, their genetic lineage has remained intact. The connection across thousands of years is unbroken. Taken together, the Blackfoot DNA story compels us to rethink how the Americas were peopled. Rather than a single founding migration that gave rise to all indigenous groups, the reality is a branching tree of lineages, some of which went extinct, some of which survived in isolated refuges. The ancient Beringian lineage once stretched into Alaska and possibly beyond, but disappeared everywhere except within the ancestors of the Blackfoot. Around 18,000 years ago, this lineage split from the common ancestor of northern and southern Native Americans. Then, around 15,700 years ago, those two lineages themselves divided, giving rise to the rest of indigenous America. The Blackfoot thus represent a third major branch of the founding populations, one that was overlooked until recently because it survived in only a single region. Their story reveals that the initial settlement of the Americas was far more diverse and regionally complex than once believed. The Blackfoot lineage stands today as a living bridge to the late Pleistocene. Their ancestors were part of the early movement south from Beringia, branching off around 18,000 years ago, surviving the younger Dryas in a refuge along the northwestern plains, and emerging into the Holocene as master bison hunters. While other ancient Beringian groups vanished, the Blackfoot endured. This endurance carries profound implications. It shows that North America was once home to greater genomic diversity than we realized, and that much of it was lost during climatic upheavals. It also demonstrates the deep antiquity of the Blackfoot within their homelands, validating oral traditions that trace their presence back to the Ice Age. When we speak of the Blackfoot today, we are speaking not only of a people with historic and cultural resilience, but also of one of the last surviving descendants of the first Americans. Their DNA carries within it the memory of migrations across Beringia, the trials of the end of the last ice age, and the persistence of life on the plains. In this sense, the Blackfoot are not merely one branch of the Algic family, or one confederacy among many. They are a living legacy of the very first wave of settlement a testament to survival against extinction, and a reminder that the story of the Americas is richer, older, and more diverse than we ever imagined. Thank you for watching.